Let's now learn how to enter a calculation into a cell. The first thing we're going to do is just enter a calculation and show you how you can repeat what you do if you happen to use a calculator. Now this is not ideal, it's not the correct way, but it's better than you manually doing a calculation and typing a number in. So the first thing you need to realize is the only way Excel knows you want to do a calculation is you have to click in a cell and the moment you hit the equal sign, it now knows it's in calculation mode. Whereas previously, let's just show you this, if we start typing and we click somewhere else, Excel immediately jumps. With the equal sign, the moment you click equals, if you click somewhere else, you actually don't go out of that cell because Excel is in calculation mode. So if you currently take information like this, pull out a calculator, and then for example for total revenue on the calculator you type 100 times 2000, and then you write in over here 200,000. A better way, still not ideal, but safer, would be if you actually do the calculation in the cell. So for example, to start it I always put equals, and then it's just like a calculator. So I'm going to say 100 times units sold 2,000. When I click enter, you'll see it gives me 200,000. The cost of sales, we can see that the GP percentage is 30% per year. So again, if you took a calculator, to mimic that in Excel, we say equals. And I'm going to say take the 200,000 that we calculated above and multiply it by, and use brackets, 1 minus 30%. So you'll see that's how you would have done it on the calculator. When I click enter, it gives me 140. And so you can continue. Over here I could say, okay, my GP must be equals to, and I'll type in 200 minus 140, and it gives me 60. Operating expense, including marketing, Marketing expense is 20% of revenue. We've got 10,000 Rand there. So again, you can see plus 20% of revenue, which is 200,000. Oh. Net profit pre tax equals the 60,000 minus 50,000. So you can see it's just a case of entering exactly what you do in a calculator. Tax, we say we make 10,000 profit, but we need to times it by 28%. And so the net profit we got is 10,000 minus 2,800. Now what we've done here is just done what you would have done in a calculator. Again, it's not ideal, but it's better than using a calculator. Because at least now, if someone clicks in that cell, they can actually see how you got it. So if, for example, they know there's an error here because perhaps the selling price now is 110, they'll be able to tell that, oh, the person used 100. So from an order trail point of view, it's a lot better. Still not ideal, but at least you don't have to pull your calculator out to do it, and at least there's some sort of a history here. The key here is to realize the moment you click equals, you're in calculation mode. I can do any calculation I want, so 2 times 2, and it gives me an answer. Let's now go see how you should enter it in Excel and why it's important. So I'm just going to go to this sheet here. What we've got is the same column. Here I've just shown the formulas we used, so they're exactly the same as what we used in here. I've just set them up so that you can actually see what's there. Because the benefit of Excel, the major benefit of Excel, is when we say something like equals 100 times 2000, the only no reason we know that is because our eyes went and we looked at the 100 and then we looked at the 2000. You can actually tell Excel to do the same thing. And it's exceptionally simple. So I know, so we're going to use this column now as standalone. So I could say, please Excel, I'm going to click equals. And
and I can either top so I know that there are hundreds in cell D12 so I can either top D12 times bar and the 2000 is in D7 D7 and when I click enter you can see it gives us 200,000 another way to do the same thing Again, I'm going to push equals I can actually click on the cells so I'm going to say look at that cell there notice it doesn't pull through the hundred it pulls through which cell you're looking at cell D12 I put my multiplication sign I click on the 2000 again so now what this is telling Excel is when you want to do this calculation take whatever you find in D12 and multiply it by whatever you find in D7 and I can click enter the benefit of this now is that you can change these numbers and Excel will do the calculation for you so if the selling price actually is 110 when I click enter you'll see that is 220,000 because it's going to sell D12 multiplying it by whatever's in cell D7 let's go back to 100 here let's see how we do the next one so the trick here is I'm going to start with equals and then wherever you got that 200,000 from that's where you need to click so in this case the reason I know it's 200,000 is because I looked at that cell there the answer so I'm going to say look over there multiply it by I'm going to say 1 minus where did I get that point 0.3 well I happen to look up here so I can click there and close the bracket when I click enter we get 140,000 the GP so you'll see here how we did it manually 200,000 minus 140 a better way equals please Excel look at that cell minus whatever you see in that cell click enter let's just quickly see the impact of making changes on a simple link here so you'll see it's 200,000 less 140 gives us 60 if this changes to 110 what you'll see is that change to 220 because it knows it needs to look at D12 times D7 this changes as well because the cell it's looking at has changed and this changes because both cells it's using have changed just change back to 100 and let's continue here we've got operating expenses including marketing so I'm going to say equals take whatever you see as the operating expenses now just be careful you can't if you've clicked on D13 if you click somewhere else notice that that's continually changing so when you click on something the way you anchor it or you tell it that's what I want is by putting an operator after it so we're gonna say plus the moment that happens Excel is now waiting to know what must it plus with are you going to give it a cell reference or are you going to give it a number so we're going to say plus and I'm going to open our brackets because of the bod mass, bod mass rules and we're going to say please take the marketing expense is 10, 20% of revenue where's the revenue how do we know what that number is it's 200,000 because we looked over here so you'll see now we've got D13 plus open brackets D16 multiplied by it's by 20%. Where's my 20%? I've got it over here. And I close the bracket. I click enter. And I get 50,000. Net profit pre tax, we know, is equal to, which was 60,000 minus 50. Where can we find the 60,000? In cell D18 minus D19. Tax, I've got a 28% here. So we go equals net profit pre tax multiplied by that 28%. And finally, we can get to the bottom and we can say profit after tax is profit pre tax minus tax. So what you've now done is you've gone from manually typing everything in to setting it up so that Excel knows what it must look for. And the key here is if I change this to 110, and I change this to 110, 
this calculation automatically knows that it must now use the new selling price. The cost of sales knows it must use the new revenue. The GP knows it must use both the new both items. If you did it this way, notice now we would have to manually go and say, oops, that 100 needs to now be 110. That 200,000 now would need to change. So by doing it this way, you actually enable a more automation, the ability to change stuff and be confident it's working. Similar to this version, there is an audit trail, so you can clearly see how you're getting to the numbers. So the end result of this is, if you want to, you can now take out your calculator and check it, but realize that if you use the inbuilt calculator, you'll be able to set it up in such a way that next time someone tells you that the GP percentage is only 35%, you won't have to work through all of these items.